this on? Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon guys and welcome back. We're in episode two of the beginner welding series. If you haven't seen episode one, I'll put a card up somewhere in there. You guys can click on that and watch it. We will be doing some welding. It'll be towards the end of this video. I was a young guy when I started out welding, probably 15 years old. You know, I was the guy out there that was just so into welding. I'm out there in, uh, you know, flip flops and open toe, barefoot, uh, shorts. You know, you just, well, I'm just gonna do a quick tack. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna, I'll just close my eyes, do my safety squints, you know. Now those things catch up to you after a while. Um, so I would say, try to start out and practice being as safety conscious as you can be. I've had surgery on my eyes numerous times. I've had grinding wheels that have exploded in my eyes. Even when I was being super careful, I've still ended up with eye injuries. I've ended up with grinder injuries. Those are pretty common. You know, you get, you get complacent. You get working and you're grinding and, you know, before you know it, you've just nicked the side of your fingers with your grinder. It happens. So I'm going to say to you, and I'm not going to be a big uh, safety preacher here because we all have to experience it. Nothing that I'm going to tell you right now is probably going to make you say, geez, I need to do that. But the older me would probably tell the younger me uh, to get yourself a decent pair of boots, especially if you're going to be stick welding, because you get a piece of slag that drops down on top of your sneaker and it burns right through the polyester part of your shoe and burns into the top of your foot. You'll understand what that means. Some decent cotton pants, uh, some cotton shirts. If you're doing stick welding, get a nice pair of stick welding gloves. You're going to want a decent helmet. I didn't have a electronic helmet until I was way older uh, in the years. I just had the standard old uh, Shade 10, you know. You run what you brung, that's all you got. But now I've got a nice auto darkening helmet. And it also has the grind feature so that you don't necessarily need a separate helmet to grind. A set of safety glasses, a must and you're going to want to get yourself a respirator. You don't want to be breathing in your welding fumes and you don't want to be breathing in the fumes from your grinding. You'll see me in a lot of my videos. I, sometimes I wear a leather apron, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes I wear a leather apron and a leather jacket. You guys ask me pretty frequently about what gear I'm using, what metal marker I'm using, what, you know, it's all understandable because you're into it and I get it, I'm into it. Any of the stuff that you see me using, and this is something recently I've done, you can click on the links down in the description. That's gonna direct you to an Amazon page. That Amazon page is all products that I use. In full disclosure, I do receive a small fee for anything that you guys buy. But if you guys are gonna ask, and I'm gonna tell you where I'm getting this stuff and give you specifics, I might as well do it. So that's why I've gone that route. It actually makes things a little bit simpler for me uh, because that way I don't have to always kind of, you know, keep trying to find these links for you guys to show you where I'm getting this stuff. And so that's that. Get some decent safety equipment. I know what you want to see next. You guys want to see some welding, right? That's why you came here. So let's do some welding. These welding rods, <laughs> they're about 15 years old. So let's dig through this pile. I'll show you what I got. I, uh, I think I got some 6013s and some 6011s. We'll dig through it and find out. But let me go grab the box of welding rods and I'll show you what we got to work with. So check this juleper out, guys. It looks pretty nasty right now. I just dug it out of storage. But this used to be my consumables uh, cart. Basically, I kept welding rods in here, um, torch tips, all kinds of just various items. So, And it's all collapsible. Each of these pieces comes apart like this. you can see how each section is removable I don't even know if they make it anymore it's made by Stanley but uh, super handy rig got, you can see little drawers so just keep various stuff in it pretty empty I've kind of like cleaned it all out If, uh, if I can find this and it's still made, I'll put a link down in the uh, description so you guys can see what, what uh, so you guys can find a way to buy it. But see, I like this. You just snap that, snap that. Yeah, we'll put this right here. And this has, you know, you can wheel this, wheel this juleper right around, you know. All right, so let's see what we got here. So it looks like we've got some eighth inch 
6011s. So that's a nice hot rod, all position. 332nd, 6013. We got one. And we've got some brazing rod. Not TIG brazing, but brazing with a torch. Uh, if you guys have oxygen acetylene, that's pretty, that's a fun, uh, that's a fun thing. That's Holy, look at these julipers. We got some big 7024s. That stuff right there will run a nice bead. That stuff lays down super fine. Ha <laughs> ha, got some old Hobart electrodes. What were these julipers back then? Check this out, guys. 975. I believe that's five pounds. Wouldn't it be nice to go back in a day and do that, huh? Some gouging electrodes. That's pretty old school. You won't use you won't use those much in the you won't use gouging electrodes. If ever. Is a hobby welder, so. So we're gonna be starting out with some 6011 eighth inch rod. And its characteristics are it has good deep penetration. It's good root, uh, good rod for uh, setting in a root pass. Or in other words, if you've got a bunch of metal that isn't overly clean, might have some paint on it, and it's not, you know, bare, bright, shiny metal, uh, 6011 is an awesome rod for that. It just burns right in and uh, takes care of that. It does require a uh, whip and pause technique, and I'm going to show you that here before we start welding. It's good for all positions, so you can do it flat, horizontal, vertical, overhead. Um, and because it's not an overly fluid weld and you have to use the whip and pause technique, it is not, uh, you know, like you're stacking a, a bead of dimes. It, it can be, uh, but I say it's a little bit harder uh, rod maybe to use, but I believe personally, as far as I'm concerned, that it's a good rod to learn on. You see that by doing this little whip and pause, that what you're doing is, is you're creating this little stacked effect. Come ahead, go back. Come ahead, go back. So I did discuss it earlier, but to start the rod, what you want to do is a striking motion, almost like you're trying to light a match. You don't want to bang the rod in, you don't want to hit the rod, you kind of want to like scratch it or strike it, like I said, like you're like you're striking a match and it'll light right up. 6011 rods are pretty easy to get going. Now when it comes time to chip the slag off, 6011 in my experience is a little bit harder than other rods to get the slag to clean up, so you want to just kind of hit it lightly with a chip and hammer and then just kind of scrape it. Uh, you know, a scrape in action usually seems to work best. All right, guys, we definitely had some problems with that rod, and I, I, I suspected that we would. Uh, the rods almost feel wet uh, in the box, so I think they've just, I think the uh, flex coating on them is just too damp, too wet, because uh, it was giving me all kinds of problems. You could keep here and extinguish itself, and uh, so let's try some 6013 rods uh, and see if we get some better uh, results with those. And 6013 has decent penetration not as deep as 6011. Uh, you don't use the whip and pause technique. Uh, 6013 you just maintain an arc and drag it along. Uh, it's an all position rod and it's a smooth fluid weld, much smoother than uh, 6011. And you use it between 30 and 80 amps. So let's get to go and see if we can get some better results with this. Now listen when I start to strike this rod you can hear me scratch it. Right there and then it starts up every one of these rods continued to give me problems throughout but it's consistent each rod was consistently doing the same thing so it's still a pretty consistent even test but these are the rods I learned to weld on you know, 6011 6013 7024 uh, the 7024 welds clean up a little bit easier than the 6013s and the 6013s clean up a little bit easier than the 6011s. So that's just my experience. 7018s, you can get them uh, for an AC buzz box, but those require you to have a rod oven or keep the moisture out of them. And because of that, I don't really use 7018 a whole lot. You can see now with 6013 how much smoother of a weld that it is. 
I had that about at 80 amps. I think the amperage was right, but it kept going out on me. So uh, again, these rods are just super old. I think they're just too damp. But compare the 6013 bead with the 6011 bead. You see how that's kind of like popcorn-y? And of course, that had a bunch of restarts too, and that was wet. But, um, you know, they're both giving me the exact same problem. And look how much smoother the 6013 went down as compared to 11, uh, 6011. 7024, big fat rod. Well, it's eighth inch, but it has a lot of uh, coating on it. So uh, this is good for uh, capping a weld. So if you put down a 6011 or a 6013, uh, this deposits a lot of material. It puts down a lot of weld. Um, it's easy to run. It's an excellent beginner rod, in my opinion. Uh, this is the type of rod that you just pretty much set it down and it almost runs itself. It almost just does it on its own. Super easy. Um, but it has limited uses. You can only use it in the flat and horizontal position, which makes this very limited. Easy slag cleanup. If you have the right um, amperage setting, it almost peels itself off. And you don't need a rod oven for this, just like 7018 you do. Let's try some 7024 and you'll see what I mean. It's gonna progressively get better as we go. So this is an ideal test piece right here. So for 7024, because it's horizontal only. So pretty much we're gonna lay our rod down right in here and it's just gonna almost do it itself, <laughs> pretty much. These, these 7024 rods, I didn't have a package that told me uh, what I should start out for my recommended amperage. So there's an app online if you go to uh, Miller welds.com uh, it's got a stick welding calculator you select whatever material it is that you're using uh, select your rod gives you all the purposes of what that rod is used for and here it is flat horizontal and fillet uh, and it'll tell you right there 140 to 190 amps so if you've got a flat or horizontal weld and you weld it up first with some 6011. The 6011 is going to have a rough finish or texture to it, but you go over it with this 7024, and oh yeah, it's going to look real good. You'll see what I mean here. It's just like putting frosting on a cake. All right, let's see how we did. I chipped off the slag. Look at that. Quit my day job. Look how nice of a bead that 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 made. That's uh, you know, that's some good looking uh, good looking weld right there. And that's all there is to it, guys. Today was a nice quick primer on getting our feet wet into stick welding. Those are the three rods that I learned to start out with. They're fairly easy to master. I think my results today would have been much better had those rods uh, not been sitting in a storage box for 15 years in the garage. But uh, all things considered, I think they came out all right. So stay tuned next week where we're going to be talking about MIG welding and we're going to be talking about a few different options that we could use to cut metal. There's so many choices out there. Now I started out, you guys are probably going to laugh, I started out with a hacksaw, a hand hacksaw, I kid you not. Uh, then I upgraded to a uh, reciprocating saw, you know, like a sawzall or whatever. I've been at the bottom of the barrel, so I can say what you know kind of works and what doesn't spare you right now I'm not going to advocate you start out with a hand hacksaw uh, unless you have all kinds of ambition and all kinds of free time on your hands uh, there are other tools out there that can do the job a little bit better without breaking the bank so I want to thank you guys for watching you guys can reach out to me on Facebook Instagram leave all those links down in the bottom if you have any questions or any comments leave those down into the uh, comment section in the bottom and I will uh, be sure to answer or respond to any of them and if you have any questions on any of the tools or you guys are just curious you know what, what's this guy use for stuff uh, click on the Amazon link that'll be down in the uh, bottom as well so thank you guys for watching have a good day appreciate your time take care oh hey guys I almost forgot uh, not only am I a creator, I also enjoy watching YouTube videos like you guys do. So from here on out, each week I'm going to feature somebody that I watch or that entertains me uh, when I'm on my free time. So when I'm not making videos, the people that I'm looking at that I think have cool content or that interest me or whatever. And it may be something completely different uh, than what I 
do for content on my show. I just have very all kinds of varying interests. So each week I'm going to feature somebody down in the description area uh, of who I think uh, that I enjoy watching on my time off. And if you would, go onto their channel. If you did click through uh, that link, go onto their channel, tell them that I sent you there and just say hello. Check out their stuff. Okay? Thanks guys. See ya. Bye.